Show Mystery Theater presents... E.G. Marshall. William Shakespeare's place as a poet is secure for all the ages. Yes, sometimes his towering reputation tends to scare away ordinary people. Strangely enough, the very people he wrote for, whom he fondly called the groundlings, because to watch his plays, they swarmed to fill the floor of the theater where they had to stand. What drew them there? Plays of such fury, terror, excitement, suspense, and magic as the one you hear now. What did he say, Brutus? He was just playing with words, Peter. I don't mean Cassius. I meant that voice I heard above the crowd. You didn't hear it, Brutus? No. Cassius? All right. Anthony? Yes, I, I heard him. And his words? He said, Caesar, beware. Beware the Ides of March. <laughs> mystery drama, The Assassination, was adapted from William Shakespeare's great classic play, Julius Caesar, especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin, and stars Norman Rose and Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Allied Van Lines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. In our era of politics, the manipulation of mass emotions by all media, the tragedy of civil war, and countries divided against themselves, perhaps no story that William Shakespeare dramatized is more timely than the fall of his benevolent dictator, Julius Caesar, and the consequent and ultimate disaster of civil war. This is the story of Julius Caesar as William Shakespeare shaped it, not in his words, but the pattern of the plot. <laughs> I swear by the time we press through this crowd, the races will be over, Marcus Antony. The people gather wherever you go to show their love for you, Great Caesar. Now I sometimes wish they were a little less faithful. Oh, no, 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 I didn't mean that. Whatever love they have for me, I return to the citizens of Rome. <laughs> to them, you are Rome. If that's true, then I am theirs. Even Calpurnia claims they come before her in my thoughts. The fate of any politician's wife. Am I not right, Brutus? Wouldn't Portia agree with me? You must ask my wife that yourself. For myself, I dare not. Oh, come now. You men are all the same. Oh, there you are wrong. Caesar stands head and shoulders above the rest of us. You see, you are no politician's wife. Ah? What am I, then? A statesman's wife. Or maybe more than that. What did you say, Cassius? I... <laughs> Only agreeing with you, Brutus. What did he say? Gashes? Oh, he was just, just playing with words. I don't mean him. I meant that voice I heard above the crowd. The one who shouted at me. They all shout for you. This one could be heard above all the rest. A warning. You didn't hear it, Brutus? No. Cassius? Nor I. Anthony? Yes, I... I heard him. And his words? He said, beware the Ides of March. That's what I heard. Was he a great, huge man with a beard, streak gray and piercing eyes? Yes, I think that one there. <gasps> oh, no. What frightens you, dear? I know him. A soothsayer. A man with second sight. Then we should take his first sight from him if he threatens Caesar. Oh. Let's not spoil a festive day. Leave him with his dreams. Besides, he warns of tomorrow... And today, the races are waiting. Come, let us go. Caesar, you are not going to stir from the house tomorrow, just the same. <laughs> we shall see. Aren't you going to the course, Brutus? I'm not a gambling man like Antony or Caesar. Uh, don't let me keep you, Cassius. No, I, uh... I want to talk to you a moment, if I may. Why not? We are friends. I hope. Lately, I haven't been so sure, Brutus. Oh, why? Oh, <laughs> Somehow you seem to avoid my eyes when we meet as if something lay between us. 
Does it show so openly? Yes. I can't believe it. Can you see your own face? Well, the eye doesn't see itself, except by reflection. It's too bad. What? That you have no mirrors that will reflect not only your face, but the thoughts and the man that lie behind it. Ah, what is that? Did you know? Yes, I'm afraid I do. They want to make Caesar king. And you want that no more than I do? Not from personal ambition. I have better reasons. What were you trying to tell me before you heard that shout? And what did you mean, except by reflection? That. Him. Caesar. Yes. Yeah. Cassius, I... I don't know if I like what you seem to be trying to draw me into. Brutus, I must. Today, Julius Caesar administers the state. Tomorrow, he could rule it. And after that, what? Do we make him a god? Tell the truth. Isn't that what worries you? Ah, uh, yes. It should. I am trying to tell you that you are a greater man than Caesar, even myself. Ambition in you, Cassius, beyond all the triumph you've already had as a soldier? I was born as free as Caesar as you were. And I mean to keep my freedom. I'm as good a man and better. But one day in full armor, he dared me to swim with him across the Tiber. I plunged straight in and he followed. But halfway across, he was crying out, Help me, Cassius, I'm sinking. And I had to drag us both to shore. And now, suddenly, he is a god and I have to kneel to him. Oh, now, Cassius, be fair. None of this has happened yet. And you may easily be starting at shadows. But listen, from the square, some new honors being awarded him. Brutus, the man imagines himself a giant with the world at his feet. And small men like you and me are little better than slaves. The tide of the time. No. Men can be masters of their fates. The fault lies not in our stars, but in ourselves if we are slaves. Brutus and Caesar. Which name sounds better? Write them, say them, conjure with them. Brutus, you are as well loved and respected in Rome. What meat does Caesar eat that he has grown so great? <laughs> I knew you once when you would have faced the devil to keep your rightful place in Rome. Enough, Cassius. Enough. What you have said, you have said out of friendship. As much for our country as for you. I know that. And in fairness, I will admit, what troubles you is heavy on my mind as well. Hail Caesar! Hail Caesar! I'm glad my words have shaken you even a little. Not half so much, perhaps, as the worship from the crowd. What have they offered him now? Shh, the race is over and he's coming. We'll take our old Casca aside and find out. Caesar looks angry, and Calpurnia pale and worried. And all the rest, even into me, look shaken. Well, no matter. Casca will tell us all. If you are one of us. Don't push me too hard, Cassius. I need time to reflect. Caesar, why? Why did you not accept? It was scarcely the most opportune moment. Damn my failing. Oh, you give too much of yourself. You need rest. P Caesar, what is it? The strangest thought has crossed my mind. I think I would like to have around me only men who are fat and lazy and like to sleep. Cassius there has nothing but muscle on his bones. He's lean and looks hungry to me. Like a wolf. Well, surely you have nothing to fear from him. He's a noble Roman and one of us. Perhaps. He never relaxes. Cares little for music or plays or games as you and I do. He is a... What shall I say? A secret man. No, no. Maybe better. A private man. You don't trust Cassius. I get a sense that he is dangerous. I must get home to Calpurnia. Come on my right side to my good ear and tell me what you think of Cassius. Oh, Casca. Tell me what happened in the forum. <laughs> no sooner were they on the dais with all the crowd pressing round than his faithful doormat, Mark Antony, would lie down and, and let him wipe his feet on him if Caesar asked. 
offered him a crown. A crown? Well, uh, not exactly a coronet of leaves, but there was no mistaking. He was testing the public mood. <laughs> for my money, Caesar was, too. How? Uh, you heard the mob. They screamed for him to accept, but he put it aside as if he wasn't worthy of the honor. Though I, standing beside him, could smell how much he desired it. And the crowd accepted his refusal? Are you mad? It was like an audience at a play. They were all the more determined to see him crowned, so Antony offered it again. He was working them up to a frenzy. <laughs> And himself, you can be sure that Antony and he had plotted the whole thing between them. So, that when it was handed to him a third time... Caesar took it? Well, I'm sure he planned to, but suddenly he fell down, frothing at the mouth and twitching as though he'd been run through by a sword. Well, bless the timing that he was taken by the falling sickness. We will not be so lucky again. Mm. And we should be ashamed that we are men of no resolve. We have our own sickness. The failing sickness. What is more fickle than the public? Then we must move fast to bring him down. Faster than you think. The word is that tomorrow in the Senate they mean to vote Julius Caesar king. He will wear that crown. I know where I will wear this dagger. I will be no man's slave. Nor I. The gods speak in anger, too. A good omen for us. Are we enough to carry it through? Yourself, myself, Trebonius, Ligarius, Decius, Metellus, Simber, and Sinner. Seven we can count on. If we were 17 or 70, we wouldn't be enough without... Yes, without Brutus. He's the key. <sighs> can we win him to your cause? He is three-quarters of the way our man already. We need only some... some device to tip the scale. Can he be bought? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't mean with gold. With power. No, he's too honest a man to care for either. There is no such a man. Everyone has his price. Huh. I know how to make Brutus one of us. Yes, to lend his name and leadership so the sheep may run for us and not for Caesar. How? Must all together write messages as though they came from the common people. Wrap them in stones and fling them through his windows tonight. What messages? Messages that call for the downfall of Caesar before he makes himself a god. And the common man of Rome spends the rest of his life in slavery. Let Rome remain a republic and let us be free men. That's all I ask to fight for. Then we all stand with you. So we are bound in blood. And no man bears the blame alone. We make sure that death... Did... Did you see and hear that? See what? About the capital. All shimmering with fire about him like a halo and great forked bolts of lightning shooting from his hands. The soothsayer pointing toward Caesar's palace. Soothsayer? The one who cried out to Caesar on the way to the races, beware the Ides of March. <laughs> I didn't see him... I'm less superstitious than you, but I will take it as an omen. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow is marked for Caesar's fall. The gods themselves demand it. We are only the instruments of his revenge. Now then we'll meet at daybreak before Brutus' house. And if I know my friend, who by then must think the people as well as us have condemned Julius Caesar, then he will lead us to the assassination. Over 2,000 years ago, the world was as troubled as it is now. But what is desperately sad is that the struggle for power and the motives of the men who waged it have changed so little. I shall return shortly with Act Two. Before the prophesied doom of the Ides of March, the elements provide a fit setting for the gathering storm. That 15th of the month, the city of Rome is racked by a wild electrical storm. 
A storm that disturbs everyone's sleep. Brutus, disturbed enough himself, is kept awake by his frightened wife, Portia. And while Brutus wrestles with his conscience, he finds no sleep. As Cassius, Casca, and the other conspirators hurl messages, presumably from the people, through the windows of his house. How can I sleep? Facing the fact that if I will not see Caesar made a king, no more than that an emperor, I have to face that other fact, that he must die. Oh, still another petition, and this time breaking my favorite urn. Are you asleep, Brutus? Awake yourself. Must Rome lie prostrate under a tyrant's foot? Are you not man enough to come forward and save the Republic? My lord, oh. what was that crash Portia, I heard? Portia, my darling, sleep while you can. It's nothing to worry oh, about. Oh, no, not the Grecian urn. Shattered in pieces. Oh, why? How? Another stone through the window? Another message? It seems that few can sleep tonight. Few? Oh, what's happening, Brutus? It's only a matter of state. It can quickly be resolved, but need to be in shape for tomorrow's events. Portia, do you love me? Oh, with all my heart. Go back to bed, and I will join you as soon as I can. Please. Brutus, be careful. I will take care. But of what? I dare not tell you. Who are you? Your brother Cassius and friends. Forgive us for intruding on your rest. Who rests tonight in Rome? Come in. I ask again, who are you? Not one man among us who does not honor you or does not wish you held the same opinion of yourself which every noble Roman bears. Traponius, welcome. Decius, uh, most welcome to... Casca, Sinner, Metellus, and We're all welcome. But for what purpose? Where is the east? That window there. Then look beyond the storm, Brutus. A new day rises. The Ides of March. Cassius, come aside with me a moment. I want to talk to you. Excuse us, gentlemen. Cassius, what brings you here in the middle of the night? I think you know. Caesar. Yes. Would all these stand with us? If you are with us. They know it must be by his death. Beneath the cloaks that shielded them when I brought them here, each man has a dagger like... Like this. I have no personal spite against him, and, and yet... And yet he will be crowned king. It's his ambition that we destroy, not the man himself. Before the serpent's egg is hatched, it must be crushed. Come, brothers. I think we know our cause. Is it Caesar alone who is to die? No, Mark Antony is too close to Caesar. If he outlives him, he's shrewd enough to bring us down. Let them fall together. This is no bloodbath, Cassius. Cut off the head. But we will not hack at the limbs. We kill Caesar boldly, not in anger. Carve him as a dish fit for the gods. A sacrifice. Let us be remembered as purgers, not murderers. Brutus is right. Mark Antony is as helpless as Caesar's arm when Caesar's head is cut off. I still fear Antony. <laughs> Caesar only. Now, it is time for us to part. There is one drawback. It's doubtful if Caesar will come to the capital today. Why? He's superstitious lately. Don't forget the soothsayer who warned him to beware the Ides of March. Ah, this very day? Leave Caesar to me. I promise you that I will bring him to the capital. Very well. When and how do we strike him? It must be openly, before all. Let's see. Yes, why not? Metellus has a suit for Caesar to give amnesty to his banished brother, Casca Cassius. And I will press this suit while Trogonius draws Antony aside. The others gather about Caesar, and on a sign, we strike. Agreed? Good plan. Agreed. Then let us meet at the capital. Till then. Till then. All right. The sun is rising on the Ides of March. Oh, Caesar, you should beware. Forgive us for what must be done. What must be done? Uh, Portia, why didn't you stay in bed? It's a raw, cold morning and bad for your health. Uh, I'm afraid, Brutus. Who were those men who came here, hiding their faces in their cloaks, coming by night like criminals? Something awful has happened or is to happen that makes you sick at heart. Oh, my darling, I want to share your grief. Hush, darling. 
Nothing for you to worry about. I'm your wife, not your mistress. Don't I deserve your confidence? Uh, oh, what, what is it, Portia? Uh, nothing. Nothing but my sickness. Oh, help me back to bed. I'll carry you back to bed. Your heart against mine. Oh, you are the dearest thing in life to me. Except my honor. Oh, perhaps after all, I, I don't want to know. Oh, Brutus, take me to bed. Let us try to get some sleep. Sleep? I wonder if anyone in Rome sleeps sound tonight. Good morning, Caesar. Brutus! What are you doing up so early on this miserable morning? I came to walk you to the Senate House. God, what a night this has been. My poor wife, racked by nightmares, crying out three times in her sleep, Help! They're murdering Caesar! In her sleep. At least she did better than I did. I found the thought of having my throat cut kept me uncomfortably awake. I'm not sure I should go to the Capitol today. Not go today, but... Caesar! Where are you? Uh, forgive me a moment, Brutus. Calpurnia is calling me. Oh, may I wait? I want to talk to you first. By all means, I won't be long. Who's outside with you? Brutus. Brutus? What is he doing here this hour of the morning? He came to walk with me to the Senate Oh, house. no, no, Caesar. You're not setting foot out of this house today. I must, Calpurnia. It is expected of me. Oh, my beloved, for your own sake. It has been a week of ill omens. My sleep has been one long nightmare, and I tell you, that man yesterday who warned you to beware, he made my blood run cold. Who can fly in the face of fate? If there are omens and predictions, they're as much for the common man as Caesar. There are no comets in the skies when beggars die. The heavens light up only for the death of princes. <laughs> And cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant taste death only once. How can a man fear death, knowing that it cannot be avoided? And will come when it will come. If you have a heart, listen to me, my darling. Well, to please you then, I will stay home. Oh. Come, let us tell Brutus. He can carry the message. Oh, good morning, ma'am. What, Caesar? You're not dressed. It's getting late. I am not going to the Capitol, Brutus. Will you tell the senators that I cannot come today? <laughs> Perhaps I should say, dare not. No. Both are false. Simply say, I will not. Brutus, say he is sick. No, no lie. Just tell them, Brutus, I will not come. I, I ask you to give me some uh, reason to give them when they ask why not. It is my will. That is enough. He was warned to beware the Ides of March. By a rag picker who dreams of having second sight? If he had true insight, what he would have said was, all hail the Ides of March. For I must tell you now what the Senate is waiting to tell you itself. Today, you will be offered a crown and made our king. Let them make him king tomorrow. Calpurnia. You know these senators and their pride as well as I do. Can we be sure they will stay with their resolve if I must tell them how lightly Caesar prized the crown they offer? Oh, forgive me, Caesar, if I speak openly. Unless... Unless you do not want the crown. Not want it? My greatest ambition, the culmination of all my life. Come, Calpurnia, help me with my robe, for I must not keep Brutus or the Senate waiting. And to you, my fellow senators, all hail. Well met, friend Cassius. And you, good Casca. Where's Antony? I believe he has some business with Trebonius. Where is... Oh, yes, I see. <laughs> It must be very intriguing from the way they have their heads together. Cassius, are we all ready? Yes. And Cassius has to waste no time, for there's some chance our intentions may be known. Then this is the hour. 
Caesar, may I and some others take you aside for a moment before the general business begins? Today I could refuse no man any request. What is it, gentle Brutus? In the matter of Probonius's suit. For amnesty for his friend Metellus's brother. To repeal the degree of banishment. Ah, now I see why Trebonius is bending Antony's ear. But all in vain. We all know the reasons involved. Don't question me any further. Just accept that someone must lead and be unshaken. Why else do you pick me for the honor you intend? Caesar! No, Casca, no more words. Then my hand shall speak for me. Oh, and me. Oh, Cassius, Ligurius, Metellus, Caesar, Cinna. Oh, even you, Brutus. Liberty, freedom, tyranny is dead. Proclaim it in the street. Come, go to the common pulpit and cry out. Liberty, freedom, and equality. Senators, senators, have no fear. What's done is done. Ambition set is paid. Where is Antony? He's approaching now. Brutus, don't trust him. Leave it to me. Is he dead? Antony, ambition is the most deadly of all diseases. And Caesar was infected. Do you doubt it? If you assure me so... Who doubts Brutus's word? But he was my friend, let me say it openly. If you think that I bear the contagion too, then kill me now. Brutus. Our quarrel was with one man only, and his ambition. If you are one of us and wish to protect the Republic, then give us your hand. Let us all dip our hands in his blood, and then forswear each other. Well said. I make only one request. That as a friend, I may say a few words from my heart about him at the funeral. That is only fair. And unwise. Hush. First, let us go and state our case before the Senate and explain why what has happened had to be. The rest will wait for the future to exonerate us. Oh, mighty Caesar. Do not lie so low. You will be revenged. Oh, Pardon me, you bleeding piece of flesh, that I am meek and gentle for the moment with these butchers. Our time will come when every knife wound in your body will open like a mouth and cry for justice. Cry more than that. Cry havoc and let loose the dogs of war! The tragedy of history, as Shakespeare knew, and the world can never seem to learn, is that violence only begets more violence. I shall return shortly with the final act. Over 2,000 years ago, Julius Caesar was cut down in bleeding ribbons by a cabal of his fellow senators. Whatever Caesar's motives may have been, his death is fait accompli. And we are about to face the chaos of a country in disorder. It is the day of Caesar's funeral, and he lies in state in the forum. Brutus, I hope you know what you have done to allow Antony to speak at his funeral. I shall speak first, and reason will and must prevail. Hush. Greetings, Antony. To you and brave Cassius. We welcome your eulogy over Caesar's body. But remind you that for the sake of the Republic, you must not blame us. Though you will, as a friend, speak all good of Caesar. You may speak fair, Antony, but do not try to stir the passions of the crowd. Cassius, I am a soldier, not an orator. I only pay my respects to the dead. Well spoken. I can only hope my eulogy will do him justice. Countrymen, hear me for my cause. What I have done was not because I loved Caesar less, but that I loved our country more. As Caesar loved me, I weep for him. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. I slew my best friend for the good of Rome. And here in my hand I have my own dagger when it shall please my country to ask my death. No! Good citizens, 
citizens! Good citizens, let me depart alone in my grief. And for my sake, stay here with Antony. And listen to his farewell to the great man we have lost. Antony, Antony. Can a man be too honest for his own or anyone's good? If he can, there he goes. Brutus, my friend. And fool, so it may prove. Hush, Antony. Friends! Romans, countrymen, I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is so often interred with their bones in the grave. So, let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus says he was ambitious, and this must be true. For Brutus is an honorable man. If halt, and grievously has Caesar paid for it. <laughs> but I am here under leave of Brutus and the rest to speak over the corpse of my dear friend, whom Brutus, that most honorable man, has said was ambitious. Enough. He said enough. Too much, I begin to realize. But you cannot stop him now. He has caught the crowd. <laughs> Only yesterday, the word of Caesar could have stood against the world. Now... He lies there, with none to do him reverence. Oh, Romans, if I were disposed to stir your hearts and minds to mutiny and rage, I should do Brutus wrong, and Cassius wrong, and all those honorable men who brought him here. Oh, my God, that is enough. I'll drive him from the pulpit. If you dare try, the crowd would pull you apart. I made a mistake to give Antony a forum. Do you see this parchment? It is his will. His will. Read it! Read it! Oh, gentlemen, if you have tears, prepare to shed them now. Think of this mantle pierced by envious daggers here. Cassius. Here. Casca. Here. The unkindest cut of all, where Brutus, whom Caesar dearly loved, ran him through with a mortal blow. Why? For ambition! To save you against power, a tyrant, a dictator? Now, then, I read, here is his bequest to what he loved best of all. You, the citizens of Rome, to every single one of you, he leaves 75 drachmas. To all of you, he leaves his private walks, his arbors, orchards. Everyone this side of the Tiber, to you and to your heirs forever to walk abroad as free men. Here was a Caesar. When will there come such another? Antony, too. I was wrong. Not in what I did, but in what I did not do. Now our lives are in peril. What steps do we take? Antony will league himself with Caesar's nephew, Octavius. And with all the city behind him, he has an army ready-made for the... Ah, uh, he has no talent to rule. His triumph is temporary. But strong enough this moment to present us with our heads. If we're wise, we will start at once to levy armies. For there will be civil war. <laughs> Brother, you have wronged me. I do not wrong my enemies. How could I wrong a friend? You have condemned one of my men for taking bribes from the Sardinian. I have? In times like these, we cannot question every man's honesty if we have need of him. In any time, I can. And I tell you frankly, Cassius, that you yourself are accused of having an itching palm. My God, if you were not Brutus, I would run you through for that. Did we bleed Caesar for anything but the sake of justice? If we did it to enhance ourselves, to live by bribes, to dirty our hands for money, then by God, I would rather be some dog, my tail between my legs, baying at the moon. You call me dog? I won't take it. I'm a soldier older than yourself, abler than you in practice. You are not, Cassius. You expect me to take this? I and more. When Caesar lived, he would not have dared move me like this. You wouldn't have dared tempt him like this. Don't count too much on friendship. 
You may drive me to do what I may be sorry for. You have done things you should be sorry for. I sent for gold to pay my legions and you denied me. Oh, a misunderstanding. A fool brought my answer. If you believe me so false a friend, then here. Take my dagger and strike as you did at Caesar. For now I know when you hated him most, you still loved him better than Cassius. Ah, sheathe your dagger. Be angry when you will. Do what you will. And I shall pass it off with a laugh. Oh, Brutus. Forgive me. Can you not remember I was born with my mother's temper? Then, if we quarrel again, I'll blame it on your mother. Oh, come, give me your hand, old friend. And my heart. I have need of both. <laughs> I never thought I would see you so angry. Now you find me sick of many griefs. Most of all, Portia is dead. Uh, how did I escape your killing me when I angered you so? How? What had I left her to live for? She saw the end more clearly than we. What end? Why, that we die in battle. We are outnumbered and hemmed in. Well, I'll see that tomorrow. All things look better with a good night's sleep. Brutus! Marcus Brutus! Marcus Brutus! Who's there? Who speaks? Who's without there? My voice speaks to you from within and with many mouths, the mouths of all my wounds. Great Caesar... No longer great. Why must you haunt me? Ask yourself that question. Or ask me again when we meet at Philippor. We must march on Philippi, Cassius. I don't agree. There is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. We must sail with the tide or lose all. Or lose all sailing with the tide. This day, one way or another, will end what was started on the Ides of March. On to Philippi! Hacker, how goes the battle? Against us, Captain. We are outnumbered and outflanked. And tell us? Dead. Ground beneath the horses' hooves, Sinna, too, and the Garius. And I will not live from the thrust where Antony ran me through. And Brutus, surrounded, held at bay like a stag, the hound yapping at his feet. Oh, what kind of coward am I? I will not live to see my best friend taken. And no man shall take me. How? How is it with you? No enemy shall take me but death. And let me join you. Here? With this good sword I ran Caesar through. Take it by the hilt. No, Cass. Yes, Casca. Would you have me live a slave when I can still die free? Now, my face is covered. Guide the sword and strike. Well, struck. No more, Casca. <laughs> oh, Caesar, you are revenged. <laughs> and with a sword that killed you. You, fellow, are you not servant to Brutus? Yes, master. Go so bring him the news of all who are dead. And tell him, if we, you can add Castor's name to the list. All gone, Strato. By your leave, sir. Legarius. Decius and Trebonius, too. Only I am left. But I've learned too late that great ends never justify small means. Wait for me a moment. I have business in my tent. Marcus Brutus! Marcus Brutus! Is it you, Caesar? Yes. We meet again at Philippi. As you promised, have you come for me? All the rest have fallen, as I did. Oh, forgive, Caesar. 
Oh, Strato. Yes, my lord. Strato. By this paper here, I make you a free man. A life for a life. If you do me one last favor in exchange, hold my sword. Oh, no, my lord. Hold it. Steady and true while I run upon it as you love me. I could not do it for less than love. Then, steady. Ah! Oh, my... Caesar. Now be still. I killed you. Not with half so good a will. No better epitaph from me than Antony's words when he found Brutus dead. All the conspirators, save only he, did what they did in envy of great Caesar. This was the noblest Roman of them all. I shall be back shortly. So many people shy away from Shakespeare, afraid of the imagery of his poetry, that he is hard to understand and his plots are hard to follow. We hope now that you will find he wrote of men and women not so unlike you and me, except for the customs of their time. But flesh and blood, and as exciting as any tale we may have brought you on this series. Our cast included Norman Rose, Robert Dryden, Joan Shea, Russell Horton, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, until next time, pleasant dreams.